People, deluded, I'm back again. Thank you very much for tuning back in. Some reports to speak about, something of nothing really. First one, and one that really, you know, is, is by the sun, so make of it what you will, and we have been linked with him before. But apparently Arsenal have joined Man City and Liverpool in tracking Leon midfielder Hossem Alwa. Now, for this season, I don't think he's having the best of seasons, but if you've been watching Leon, again, it's down to him how good he wants to be, but he's a baller. You've seen him in the Champions League, you've seen him at league level. I do think he's got the ability to score even more goals, but I think he's improved over the last sort of two, three years that he's been around the scene. I think he's improved in front of goal. You're not going to mention goals when you think of Awa. You think of passing range, you think of controlling the game, you think of playing between the lines, you think of being comfortable in possession. He could play for Barcelona, in my opinion, and he is someone at 21 that could really be a player in the future. If he keeps working hard, he stays fit, um, you know, and it, he is an Arsenal player, at least what definitely seeing Arsenal in my lifetime, you'd want to see, especially what Wenger introduced, being technically good, you know, one-twos, vision, he's got it all, people. Everything we want, or if we feel we lack in midfield, bravery on the ball, being able to make decisions in midfield, he's got it. I would love him. The problem is the price tag. You're probably looking at minimum 50 million. That's probably going 60 plus. Apparently, he's been quoted as wanting 60 odd. Now, Arsenal, when you look at Pepe, could do that. But could we do that in the landscape of we need to move several players on and we potentially need to, if we're going to spend that, potentially could it be worth addressing the less glamorous mid sort of midfielder, more box to box midfielder, or signing a real, real top centre half sort of thing that we can have confidence in? Kind of the same way I look at a Bamian up front and you've got absolute confidence that he's going to score a respectable amount of goals I want that with our defence like I'm not saying Van Dyke, but could you imagine having in our own little way a Van Dyke sort of figure whether that's someone bought for big money or, or someone scouted that we can really believe in and for Arteta to move forward with because Arteta's already improved us defensively I'm cautious of the word def improve because we'll only see long term but I definitely feel we're keeping less clean sheets and the players are more receptive to the darker arts of stop of defending not just the defenders but stopping stopping attacks potentially higher up the field I feel we're doing that to a respectable amount but that can only go so far with the individuals we have Arteta's a magician I said coaching's a big part of this role he's got to improve some players we want to see improve and improve players like Mustafi who you know I'm sure many of you would have driven him to Heathrow to go to whatever team yourselves um, so he's working miracles but when you disregard form how many can they keep it up I'm a big fan of Luis how far is he going to play in this sort of form how far is Socrates and Mustafi going to play do you get what I'm saying we can't really bet on that so Re reinforcements are going to happen so is it wise to spend that sort of money on Aoua would Aoua listen to us going from Lee I'm sure he would listen to Arsenal because if you're a French man or a French player especially being in the early 20s you know what Arsenal has been doing you look at Saliba you know what Arsenal's on but same way you see Liverpool you see Barca you see City these are all way more attractive propositions for him when you get past any potential romance of Arsenal you look at City they want to win the league again it's Pep Guardiola a player who keep a man who keeps bigging him up people I don't need to tell you what Liverpool's doing he's <laughs> like you see what Liverpool's doing it's an exciting project Barcelona and Bar is Barcelona and Madrid is just Madrid so these sort of teams we don't have a chance people um sort of thing I would love him. He would really improve us. He's a player I could sit here and speak about all day. He's a player I always sign in football manager. Ironically, he rejected a move. I'm Arsenal. He rejected a move. I won the league as well, but for relevance, he rejected a move to me for Liverpool. And it's a bit deep, man. I'd say... I've been rejected about three times. I got rejected for a wonder kid that went to City, even though I was going to give him first team, he's at Birmingham. Um, I got rejected for my man as well, Alwa. And the one that really burnt, because it was my first year, I got rejected for Zaha. Like, we agreed a fee. I spent months, people. You know, when you tap them up on Football Manager, talking about them to the press, I'm basically swearing down I'm going to buy you. Tapped him up so the fee, you know, he's, he, he started to dig his heels and said, I'm leaving Palace. Fee was like 30, 40 million people. Agreed it now. Contract sorted. City come out of nowhere. You know when you when you press the you stimulate the game and you see he's rejected your offer and gone to City and now he's sitting on the bench and we won the league. But moving away from video games, people, he's a quality player. I just don't think it's going to happen, people. If Liverpool get him and Werner, that's two big boy signings for me, people, and it gives Klopp even more options. And I think he needs them. He needs that headache. I think that would really shake up things. If, if he got Werner, it would shake up that front three. If he got Alwa, he can be used in the pivot. He can be used as a 10 or unofficial, not necessarily the majestic poetry emotion 10, but, you know, sort of in a three-man midfield, the licence to try to break the lines. This will 
he's got to reinvent because that squad's been together for a minute now, Liverpool. And you know, it's it. it I don't. I'm not going to say this because it might not be true. But you typically see teams like Liverpool win a champs, win a prem. You know, dominate. Obviously, one champs, one prem. Was it this year doing their thing? Next year it might be a bit of a fall off because you just need to freshen things up. It might not be that they, that anyone's got better, but you get the point. Moving away from that, though, people. Um, ben Shaif. Now I'm sure Ben Shaif of Arsenal has a, like a year or two years left on his deal, so I'm not sure how valid this is. But in terms of loan spells, the 22-year-old has been having one of the best loan spells away from this club at Doncaster, and I've said it before. He's been playing week in, week out primarily in midfield, um, he's been doing his thing. First and foremost, when you got on loan, it's experience. Um, I think he's going to have a good career at some level. I think the only reason he's not really had an opportunity here is because where the simple positions he plays. Um, I think he said he wants to play him back in midfield now. Um, and he's, he switched to a centre-half previously and he's not big enough anymore, but he did. Centre-half, there's a lot of people in and around the squad at youth level and at first team. Um, you know, centre-mid, I don't need to tell you why it's stopped. And he is someone that's very good. He can play in midfield, he can play at centre-half, can fill in that right-back. He's very much an Arsenal player and that he can handle himself te te technically, people. He's got good appreciation and um, of, of his surroundings and his positioning. I think he's going to have a... I think he's potentially long-term a Premier League player at some level. And in Championship minimum, he's going to have a good career. Apparently, we want to loan him out to a club in Europe next season after his impressive loan spell here comes to an end. Maybe that's to boost his improvement as a player. Maybe that's to... You know, if he plays in Europe, he's on the eyes of people, we might get a fee for him. Maybe it's just worse. Um, I, I was inclined to believe, actually, this would he'd return in the summer and potentially he'd be someone to be moved on purely because he's 22 now. He's at that age where you're part of the first team, but you're not. You're going to be playing 23s primarily if he stayed. You know, you'll probably train with the first team and whatnot, but... Fair enough, Arteta's probably not had a chance to look at him, but is he going to get an honest opportunity? And this whole coming back to Arsenal, going on loan, coming back to Arsenal loan, you have to allow it at some point. And I think he needs to go somewhere where he can set his roots down, whether that's home or abroad, and really just keep improving. Him and his brother, I believe his brother's on loan. I, I, I could be wrong, it could have been Cheltenham, but his brother, Max Schaaf, has been on loan. I think his brother was also at Arsenal, and they're doing quite well, people. But if we look at it, Max Chafe. Yeah, Max Chafe. It's at Cheltenham, people. He's 20. His brother's 20. I mean, he's been doing his thing. And his brother's come back from a serious injury as well. So, it must be fun having two footballing... Two footballing thingy, boy. Two footballing family members. Um, two footballing sons for their family, man. Um, must be decent, man. Two footballers. Two sons as ballers. But um, shout out to Ben Chafe, man. Hopefully, he can do his thing, man. Because he's a very decent player. With as, Like I said, he's 22... He needs to start setting down roots, but I think he's got a future ahead of himself. Um, moving away from that, though, people. And you've also seen Hector Bellerin's been linked with a move. Now, before I say his actual link, let's go back to what his agent said, speaking to Sky Ailey in November. He likes Italy. There's already been interest from an Italian club, but I can't reveal it. He has a long contract and it won't be easy to take him away from Arsenal. He's their vice captain. We'll see how it goes. Moving forward, Inter Milan are interested in Hector Bellerin, Atletico Madrid and Seville are also interested. But Bellerin would prefer a move to Serie A. Arsenal could sell if they receive an adequate offer. And it's, I've got a lot of things about Bellerin. I feel one on one hand, I want to see Arteta getting Bellerin back to when he looked like he had that yard of pace. He looked like another winger at right back. He looked like Hector Bellerin. I don't think he does right now. Admittedly, when I look at Bellerin, I do genuinely believe if it wasn't Bellerin, if your name was, I don't know, Hector Brown and not Hector Bellerin, um, not to play that card or say any of these things, but I do think there'd be a bit more scrutiny. I do think you'd be moved on because I do think Bellerin has regressed, regressed. I do think he's a bit basic. I don't think when you're looking at it, I don't. I do think you could potentially get a better right back. I do think there's a better right back at this club currently. Um, if he wanted it in Maitland Niles, and I, I, Bellerin has the potential to be yards above Maitland now, but he's not doing it. Um, you know, if you could... we Did we not turn down a bit of 50 million for Bellerin? Bellerin, you know, he might concede he is, rightly or wrongly at times, unnecessarily criticised. He might say, you know what, Italy is a, a, a familiar sort of lifestyle to Spain or where he grew up in Spain. Obviously, he's big on fashion and architecture and way of life. That's somewhere for him to go. He's Obviously, he's not 30-odd, but he's someone that is very in tune with what... 
eat certain foods, eating certain foods does to your body and you know, Italy, they keep players going forever. So that could be something that attracts him. Um, obviously when you're linked with Seville and Atletico, they're in his homeland. So you can see why he's linked. The Atletico one, if I was Bellerin, I'd be on it because he could actually improve quite a lot playing in that system um, at Atletico Madrid people. You look at Trippier um, and whatnot. Bellerin, you know, he's been at Arsenal for a number of years. I know he's spoken about wanting the captaincy and things. He might concede there's unfinished business. He might concede he wants to stay with a vote of confidence with Arteta. Um, but he's got a contract until 2022. He's on, at least I believe that's what Transfer Mark said, um, he's on decent money. You'd imagine him being here for a while, um, him seeing that, at, at least at face value, he could be here for a while. You'd be inclined to believe it'd be a big contract. And is he deserving of that? Could you potentially move Bellerin on and scout another right back of a similar profile? That's an avenue to, to to look at. I want Bellerin to stay and improve, but I'd be lying to you if I said I wouldn't entertain offers people. The only people I wouldn't entertain offers with and excluding Aubameyang's contract, because I would for his contract purposes, but Aubameyang, Martinelli and Saka, and that's just crazy money. I'm not on for them. If you could get a 30, 40, anything from 30 to 50 million for Bellerin, I'd bite someone's hand off really and truly. So we'll have to see what happens in that regards, man. I, my first thing for Bellerin is to stay and whatnot, but, you know, I'd entertain that, to be fair with you. And to to be fair, I don't know how valid these things are. I mean, if Bellerin doesn't... Im fair enough, he's been playing with an injury, but if he doesn't improve, is he someone we've got to move on? Because would we move him on in the summer? I, I don't know, because, again, it would be... You know, we need to address certain areas, but we're in a difficult position with Bellerin because fast forward a year, you'd be running his last year of his deal down. There's a decision to make. He's been here for a long time now. Um, Arsenal has been a part of his life since he was 16, but all think good things come to an end. He could be somebody potentially moved on. We'll have to see what happens in that regards. Um, moving to centre-halves quickly, people, and Oppo Meccano talk, as we all say. I'm starting to think 30 to 40 million could do it, people, for him, based on the fact that he's contracted until 2021, hoping to a degree that, I won't say coronavirus does as a favour, but in the basis of you do think it's going to affect potential transfers, he's made no intention of signing a new deal until 2021, so it seems that not just us, but anything from 20 to 40 million, 20 would obviously be an opening bid, Arsenal and other teams could take advantage. Um, sporting director of Leipzig has said, such such sums, he was in reference to 60 million, are unlikely at least this summer. You have to honestly say that there are three potential probable options for Paul McConnell. A change under the fixed amount, a contract extension or a free transfer at the end of 2021. And you'd imagine Leipzig within their model, the last option is something they're not on. Um, letting him sign, let, letting him leave for free considering, you know, they got him for pe for pennies. They can make a decent change on him and continue the same process. He said he doesn't want to renew, so he potentially will need to be sold. And they might be looking at it, we need to get something for this player because it's better than nothing. And even if they got 30, 40 million, that's a significant profit on how much they initially got my man for. It might not be the 50, 60 more that you've seen other summers, but it is what it is in that regards, people. Um, it's a bit irrelevant, but speaking about centre-halves, Van Dijk picked Aubameyang um, as part of his five-a-side dream team. He said... Based on what he's done throughout the season, together, Lacazette and Aubameyang are a fantastic striking duo. duo. Um, not going to go over it, but Troy Deeney bigged up Bakayo Saka and described him as a popular player, people. Um, so moving away from that and back to semi-relevant stuff, Football London is reporting that Chelsea and Arsenal are keeping tabs on 18-year-old Stoke City and Ireland 6'5 centre defender Nathan Collins. Scouts from both teams have watched the player and will continue to monitor to once the crisis subsidised. Now, again, you can't just take that at face value and assume they're watching and they're going to sign him. That could be true on one hand. We could just be watching just to keep updated I know you know, on things like that and just stay knowledgeable and everything. We could be doing progress reports and you want to see that. There's, anyone can see, you know, there's no point. Scouting is it's, it's, it's not rocket science. You, go on, you don't watch one player once and say he's amazing. You watch them several times. You watch them at home. You watch them away from home. You watch them in cups. You watch them potentially 10 games because you'll see a base level of performance. You'll see how they perform away from home. You'll see how they react to different things, how they react to success, how they react to failure sort of thing. And what, what you've also got to see is what they do before the game started. Like, there's a certain winger that used to play for England and is now playing in the league. I was speaking with scouts when I was doing my scouting course. Um, a very high-ranking sporting technical director didn't move for this potential England 
um, future England international and England player currently didn't move for him at the time people well, I say England he's stopped playing for them now but um, didn't move for him purely because he was a quality player but in the warm up when it was warm up time he was going around the stadium this was at home saying hi to his family sorting out his laces and just doing other things so mentally he wasn't there now Collins is someone I've spoken about before and those of you that watch me know I've spoken about a couple of these championship targets and um, players. I think he's even captain Stoke and Stoke have a decent little youth, young little right back as well on um, on their books and I know Arsenal and Stoke don't like each other but I mean 6 foot 5, 18 years of age, captain Stoke on a couple of appearances, he's decent. What I like about him, he's one of them defenders. He's old school, he can play with a ball at his feet, um, but he likes to header, he likes to defend, he likes to put his body on the line for his team, people. I don't know if that's the Irish in him or the fact that he's, you know, he's playing for Stoke, but I like that about him. And he plays with a lot of Irish heart, man. Like, I, I think he can, he's, doing, he's doing his countrymen proud. Um, he's a decent player, so, yeah, man. But beyond just being linked with him, who knows? Um, we've been linked with Jerome Boateng again. You lot know he's expected to leave Bayern Munich at the end of the season. Ironically, apparently Arsenal and Chelsea are also keen in signing him. As you lot know, apparently we went for him in January, but it didn't work. And that might just be agents getting their P's. Um, I sent a half that us, Man City and just about any team has been linked with. Paul Torres of Villarreal, who, you know, Santi said Arsenal asks about him all the time. Allegedly, he's taking Span English lessons. Sorry, why would he take Spanish? He's taking English lessons. Now, he might just be doing that because English is... A language frequently spoken around the world and especially for footballers you might see a Belgian man a Spanish man other different nations and the, the common denominator might be that they speak English people to get it. so that might just be for that to help with teammates and just something a skill that he has as a man in his life obviously a bit of that could be in preparation to potentially one day move into the Prem if that's not going to happen already um, but he said in the morning I do the training regime and then I do food following the guidelines established by the club. In the afternoon after lunch, I study a few I study a few languages because I was learning English and now's a good time to resume it. So yeah, he's, that could just be taking advantage of the corona thing and just, you know, doing his thing. But he said training, so that might be, you know, he's just doing it. He might have learned other languages already. I don't know. Um, a bit of a random vid, but I want to talk about a couple more centre half people. Not in depth, but it's funny because we've been linked. We were linked with Hamaso at Atletico Madrid now, previously at Espanyol. I wouldn't say he's struggling, but he's not having the best of seasons there. So could we put one? Could we potentially go for go for him for a reduced fee, or did we dodge a bullet? I'd also say the same of former Real Valladolid man Calero, because he's went to Espanyol and he's been struggling for them also. One violent lead man that is decent, and I know I'm butchering that name. We've spoken about him before, but Mohamed Salizu, Ghanaian international, or Ghanaian man national, um, 20 years of age, decent recovery pace, quite composing, quite strong, decent in the air. Probably needs to improve his, his positioning is all right, but his concentration needs to improve. Does have a mistake in him, but he is a very decent defender and a towering figure. And you're hearing 10 to 15 million euros. Being 20, being a bit of a rough diamond, is he someone Arsenal could look at to move on? Because I'm sure he had a great game against Barcelona a few months ago. I could be wrong. Is he someone to have a look at? And from an Arsenal point of view, um, could it be? Could we have a look at Luke Ayling, a former Arsenal player? You remember he won the FA Youth Cup here? Some people might not even remember him, but he's now 28 and playing for Leeds. He can play in centre, centre defence, he can play at fullback. he can even fill in midfield. Could he be a competent squad option, depending on how much Leeds offer? Now, if I was him, I'd stay at Leeds, he's loved there. You know, they're potentially going to get promoted, but maybe a move back to London to play for a team he didn't get a chance could be something for him. Um, he's also very decent with a ball at his feet. I mean, could Lee Kalen be something? He's contracted until 2023, so they're going to probably ask for 20 million minimum. So we'll have to see what happens in that regards, people, but... He's someone I would genuinely have a look at if we could. Um, moving away from that, though, I don't think I've got anything more to add, so I'm going to get out of it. People, it's always a pleasure, as you know. Deluded, I'm out.